Well, this medicine um, is called rintuximab vidotin. It's a long word for it, or short term is SGN35. And it's a monoclonal antibody that attacks a protein on the surface of certain types of lymphomas called CD30. And this is in patients that have Hodgkin lymphoma and certain types of T cell non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, so these are rare types of lymphomas, but also very difficult to treat. And we didn't have a lot of good treatments for patients who had failed regular treatments previously. And so this is really a breakthrough in that we finally have something to treat these really difficult to treat patients. So this uh, protein uh, attaches to the, the lymphoma cell. And then attached to the protein is a uh, type of a chemotherapy directly attached to it. So it's a way to directly give the chemotherapy to the cancer cell and not harm the normal cells as we do when we give the chemotherapy through the vein. So less side effects for the patient, um, able to tolerate it better, able to get the doses in. It's given through the vein once every three weeks, so very um, easy to tolerate and convenient and doesn't have nearly the type of side effects that some other chemotherapy does. Unfortunately, it's not a cure. It's a way to be able to shrink the tumors down to get the patient feeling better, get rid of some of their symptoms and in some cases to be able to get the patients ready to go undergo a stem cell transplant after that. Now, the original studies, uh, the types of patients that received this basically had very few other options and so this has given them an additional option and to, to look for potential to go on to other treatments in the future or up to transplantation in some cases. So it has helped that and now as, as I mentioned we're moving that forward earlier in the course of the disease so perhaps we can prevent patients from relapsing. So we're very fortunate in that we have um, a lot of potential to access research clinical trials to be able to get those treatments for our patients years earlier than they could otherwise receive them. And um, that it not only helps the, you know, the research, but also the individual patients and future patients as well. Uh, we participated in some of the clinical trials uh, with respect to the treatment being given after the patients had failed other treatments. And um, that uh, eventually, of course, led to its approval. And they are going to be doing further clinical trials where they add this new promising medication earlier to the, in the treatment phases of patients to see if it can improve some of the uh, upfront treatments for these patients so that they don't have to fail. So we have um, physicians and researchers that specialize in all the different diseases. And so by doing that, we're able to be able to have the um, cutting edge treatment for all of those different types of diseases and research in all the different types of cancers so that we can help many thousands of patients. Our research into uh, lymphoma really began in the mid-1980s, and um, what happened was that Dr. Uh, James Armitage and Dr. Dennis Weisenberger came here. They started what's called the Nebraska Lymphoma Study Group, where we got the physicians in the region to be able to collaborate with us in sending not the patients, but the patient's specimens and the patient's clinical information, and then to place the patients on clinical uh, protocols where we could gather the information to be able to later on use some of those specimens for our research potential. And that was really the start of, of the lymphoma program here in the mid-1980s. It's continued to grow and expand uh, so that now we have over 30 researchers and we have um, probably 25 uh, clinical uh, FTEs or physicians that, that help to specialize in patients with lymphoma and leukemia and other blood cancers. And have continued to advance the research and the clinical trials so that now we have um, basically um, 30 or 40 clinical trials open at any one time for these patients. Uh, actually, in fact, there are many different um, types of smart bullets, so to speak, that are being used for other tumors, and they, they have been approved over the past few years. And that's really the kind of the theme of a lot of the new treatments is that we're trying to attack just the tumor and not so much the normal tissues so that we can decrease the side effects and have better anti-cancer effects, and that's really the theme of all of our new cancer drugs.